the west of Iran, where the land has been formed by the Zagrosfold and Thrust Belt. Conditions are suitable for a diversity of rare reptiles. One of the most mysterious creatures in the wildlife lives in these mountains. Gypsum and sedimentary rocks are the habitat of a snake found only here. Unbelievably, the spider-like creature is part of an adder's body. This mysterious adder is equipped with the most elaborate tail arrangement in the world of snakes. And uses it to hunt birds. It's called the Iranian spider-tailed horned viper. Diversity of climate in the small land of Elam, otherwise known as the land of Alamto, is not limited to the limestone habitat of the spider-tailed horned viper. The river Seymare, with many of its sources, the high walls of Kamirku, the sand fields in the south, with an altitude of less than 100 meters, are all different habitats in Elam with a short distance between them. The Horned Viper. It is spring, and the Horned Viper of the Abu Foyer Desert is looking for prey. The morning sunshine doesn't bother it, and it can still be active. But the horned viper is safe from sunlight with its unique technique. hasn't eaten anything for a long time. It waits under the sand for its prey. A little further away on the west and south alluvial plains lives a snake which looks like a cobra. The hooded Malpolon or false cobra is a semi-venomous snake and the spreading of its cervical ribs gives it a frightening look. Snakes grow all the time. Therefore, they are not comfortable in their present skin. So they try to change it. The indicator of the melting time is when the eyes become opaque. It lasts for about three days. Now it's time to cast off the old skin.
When the old skin is shed, the snake loses some of its identification signs. And so the hooded male pollen must prove its identity. Marking territory in the mating season is an important behavior of this snake. It rubs a liquid oozed from its nose on its belly. When it moves, the liquid leaves a trace on the ground, which is a warning to rival males and an attraction to females. In the north, the mountainous oak forests of Alamto are full of life. This forest is the habitat of Iran's largest adder. The blunt-nosed or Levantine viper. In addition to the oak forests, it lives in other habitats, such as rocks and hills without forestation. This adder preys on a large variety of animals. Its technique is sitting and waiting. It has sensed the quail. It conceals itself skillfully. The quail is picking seeds, unaware of the danger. It cannot even imagine what danger is waiting for it under the dry leaves. The hungry blunt-nosed viper is waiting in ambush. The quail escapes, and the adder has caught nothing but a feather. season of the horned viper is in spring. Rodents reach the peak of their activity in these nights. This prey is not always available in such numbers. The horned viper has become completely nocturnal. It hasn't eaten for a while and needs to gain strength before mating. It smells the pleasant odor of the cheeseman's gerbil. Its hunting technique is astonishing. It lies in ambush near the prey it has identified with its powerful sense of smell. The scent of the cheeseman's gerbil has driven it crazy. But it's a patient hunter, and if necessary, it will wait motionless for hours.
this time, the Cheeseman's gerbil was sharper and faster than the Viper. But it is not always this way. for a snake with smooth, shiny scales. Like a fish in water, it can easily swim in the sand. The Arabian sand boa is one of the two species of blind snakes in Alamto. The snake's eyes are on top of its head. It can watch its surroundings while hidden in the sand. Tarantulas are among the favorite prey of geckos, but not the large tarantula in this desert. The horned viper hasn't had food for a long time. It goes to the gerbil's hole to try its luck once again. It's determined to catch the gerbil any way possible tonight. And the gerbils are unaware of its presence. The tarantula, with its very sensitive and precise sensors, feels any movement around it. A few milligrams of the adder's venom will kill any rodent in a few seconds. Now it must find the gerbil with its powerful sense of smell. The Dorius gecko is watching with its large eyes. It knows that horrifying predators dominate the Abu Qoyer desert at night. finds its prey and tries to swallow it whole, head first. Both predators start eating their prey. The adder swallows it whole, but the tarantula chops it into pieces. This big tarantula can turn a Dorius gecko into a mass of skin and bone in a few minutes.
It's the same story every night in the Abu Qoyer Desert. Kabir Ku, Bahram Chubin Defile. One of the functions of the tale is intraspecific communication. This male gecko is encouraging the female to mate. The spring and summer are the peak of the gecko's activity. The females are pregnant and must feed. In nature, no creature is safe. The Susan tiger snake has entered the gecko's territory. Even after its death, the stickiness of the gecko's limbs still works, but it doesn't hinder the Susan. In this dry sedimentary labyrinth in the warm area in the west of Alamto, a different lush green and cool valley called the Zainagon Cave, is a suitable habitat for one of the rarest venomous snakes in Iran. The Black Cobra, or Desert Cobra. Thirst and abundance of prey have drawn it to the Zainagan cave. The poisonous skin of the green toad has no effect on the black cobra. The cobra has sensed the toad. And the toad has felt the danger too and uses its own technique. The cobra actively perceives the prey with its strong sense of smell.
the River Seymare, the main habitat for freshwater aquatic creatures. The Caspian turtle is quite dependent on the river. Streams that pour into the Seymare are full of fish and other small aquatic animals, and the turtle feeds well on the abundant food. The riverbank is a good place for the Caspian turtle to dig its nest with its powerful claws. Seymare is the habitat of a snake that is heavily dependent on fresh water. The dice snake is non-venomous and feeds mostly on fish. It's a good swimmer. But not every snake in the water is aquatic. The blunt-nosed viper is a good swimmer too. It has come to the river to quench its thirst. But some habitats do not have a river. Preserving water in a body is vital in the desert. The adders that live on this dry, harsh sandfield do not use their mouth to warn. They make a warning sound with the oblique scales on their sides. The saw-scaled viper has the most deadly venom among all vipers in Iran. But why does the rubbing of its scales produce such a loud sound? The secret is revealed by magnifying its scales. It is these saw-like blades in the middle of the scales that create the warning sound. Vipers like the blunt-nosed and spider-tailed that live in damper habitats, worn by hissing through their mouth. Some species in the sand field have great power to tolerate the intense heat and lack of water the toadhead agama. Its prey is everywhere. It's hard to escape from its high speed. There's no way for the grasshopper to escape from its conical teeth. A different day in the south of Alamto. In July and at the peak of the heat, conditions become hard for the animals when the sandstorm begins.
a great change is underway for the residents of the desert. The sun has risen behind a curtain of dust. The intense heat of July will soon cover the desert. The sandstorm has baffled the horned viper. It goes everywhere to find its nest. But the sandstorm has filled the nests. After the sun rises, the sand becomes so hot that even going under the sand is fatal. It does whatever it can to save its life. This behavior shows that it feels great danger. The sandstorm has caused trouble for other reptiles too. The spiny-tailed lizard is more adept than the viper in digging a nest with its strong claws. The sunlight is not fatal for the spiny-tailed lizard, but the viper has a slim chance of survival if it cannot dig a deep nest before sunrise. The heat and dust have agitated the Iranian spider-tailed horned viper. It leaves its lurking place 
to find the last ponds in its habitat. There is a rumor among the local people of Alamto that there is a poisonous and deadly lizard in the region. People call it Chez and believe that its venom can kill anybody instantly. But it's only the harmless, non-venomous leopard gecko. It's an expert at preying on arthropods, the smallest reptile in Elam province is the banded dwarf gecko, with a length of about three centimeters. Sun spiders and scorpions are among the main enemies of this gecko. The scorpion is equipped with a lethal weapon at the tip of its tail. Although the dwarf gecko can be reached by the scorpion's sting, the presence of an enemy has worried the scorpion. It has sensed its old enemy, the leopard gecko. The scorpion will never catch the dwarf gecko. The leopard gecko is immune to the scorpion's venom. But many reptiles are not immune to the scorpion sting. The confrontation at night between the most poisonous creatures of the desert. The saw-scaled viper, the most venomous viper in Iran, and a large scorpion in the Abu Poyer desert. The result depends on the speed of their movements. As it appears, the scorpion pulled the trigger late, and the saw-scaled viper injects its venom. Severe convulsions grip the scorpion's body. It will soon die, and the viper's weight will end. Diurnal reptiles have adapted themselves to the harsh conditions of the desert. The Iranian agama can tolerate the heat well.
Its eyes move independently to some extent and can cover a large area. Nonetheless, danger is always lurking. After marking its territory several times, the hooded Malpollen feels hungry. It finds the gerbil's nest and doesn't miss the chance. It's an expert at taking rodents by surprise in their nests. Something has worried the Iranian Agama. It can be seen easily because of its blue color. The gerbil is no more. With its powerful muzzle, the hooded Malpollen breaks open the gerbil's nest. The Agama has been taken by surprise. The Agama is in trouble and must find a way out. It lifts its body off the ground, blows the gula sack, and changes color. If this doesn't prove useful, it will do something else as a last resort. The Agama usually prefers escaping to staying. It was lucky that the hooded Malpollen was not hungry. Otherwise, the fight would have ended differently. The scent of a squirrel has triggered the blunt-nosed viper to hunt. Squirrels live in the trunks of oak trees. But can this limbless and relatively heavy reptile reach the nests? The blunt-nosed viper displays one of its unique abilities. It climbs the vertical trunk of the oak tree easily. The abdominal plates of the viper stick to the bark of old oak trees and enable the viper to climb vertically. The hungry blunt nose does not give up trying and searching. This time, an easy morsel has attracted it. The wood pigeon has had a good year, and it is the second time it has bred.
A snake lives on this mountain, whose appearance looks a lot like the black cobra, but it's non-venomous. The black-spotted white snake. It is autumn, and the black snake must preserve fat for hibernation. The ground agama is not an easy prey, but the black snake is hungry. It must bite and coil around the prey at the same time in order to kill it. The weather is getting cold and the reptiles must find a shelter for the cold winter days. With the first snowfall, the reptiles' activities stop. They will stay at the lowest metabolic rate until spring. When spring comes, the land of Alamto comes to life once again. Spring starts from Dehloran, one of the warmest areas in Iran. The spiny-tailed exits the nest for the first time after a few months of hibernation. The Desert Monitor has started the new year in its life, too. The spiny-tailed has been so inert that its body is covered in cobwebs. Its shrunken skin indicates huge loss of fat. The cold, vernal weather does not let it move fast. Scaly reptiles molt for the first time in the spring. Therefore, molting can be observed everywhere. The gecko must molt every now and then. To shed the old skin, it does everything. The old skin is nutritious and full of creatine. The gecko knows this well.
reptiles usually lay eggs in spring. The female snake-eyed lizard is preparing a nest for laying eggs. It lays eggs in a specific time interval. The young will hatch soon. It is mid-spring, and some reptiles have not laid their eggs yet. The female spiny-tailed is pregnant, and the eggs in her belly need nutrients. At first, the warm sunlight makes her body ready for rapid movements. Although this lizard is mainly herbivore, when she is near egg-laying time, the crave for nutritious insects turns her into an insectivore. She needs a lot of sunlight to digest the proteins. Carrying a load of eggs lessens her agility and makes her vulnerable to danger. In the cycle of life, reptiles guarantee the life of many other species, including birds. The golden eaglet is very hungry. Both its parents try hard to feed it. The diet of the eaglet consists mainly of the reptiles in the region. Every animal is faced with big challenges, from birth to maturity. The adult Susan tiger snake caught the leaf-toed gecko easily, but its young are in big trouble. Few people can imagine an arthropod as the predator of the Susan snake. Both animals are poisonous. A very serious fight. The centipede has stung the Susan snake and has injected its venom. But the snake doesn't want to lose the battle. It too injects its venom into the centipede. Both are poisoned, and their lives are in danger. The centipede dies after a short while. The Susan snake is not well either. It escapes the battleground, half dead.
the rain pours down all over Alanto. In the evening, the rain reaches the Abu Ghuyar desert. There is no water source in the habitat of the horned viper, so it doesn't miss the chance. It drinks all the water on its scales carefully and patiently. On the day after the rain, the field is doubly joyful. The birds breed in April and May. Some of them are year-round residents, while others are migratory, reproduce at this time of the year, and finally leave. They know the insects are very active these days, so they do their best to feed their chicks. The bird's eagerness to find prey leads them to be caught in the trap of the Iranian spider-tailed viper. The spider-tailed viper is as active as the insectivore birds. To feed its chicks, the bird promptly attacks any insect. The Iranian poet Nizami writes in his book, Khamseh, I witnessed a bird on the way who took an ant as its prey. Still its bill it had not cleaned. When to another bird, it fell prey. The spider-tailed viper's camouflage is so precise that the bird sits directly on its body. And the double attraction of the bird to the spider-like tail of the viper indicates the best adaption in the most evolved tail structure for hunting in the world of snakes. This image was recorded for the first time in the world of natural history. The Iranian spider-tailed viper a unique species endemic to western Iran has just recently been discovered. Due to the limited distribution range and the high demand of zoos all over the world, the viper needs serious protection.
by the Environment Department of Iran. Otherwise, it will soon face the danger of extinction.